Okay, so one last experiment for today, and I should note that we've looked at changes in three exogenous variables and how they work through the model. But there are other exogenous variables, and I would encourage you to think about how the model works when you change those other ones that we didn't look at, uh, because that would make for a good quiz or test question, you know, changing ones that you haven't seen. But in any case, let's go on now with this decrease in matching efficiency. So remember that matching efficiency is given by this term E in the matching function, which is kind of like for any A and Q, how many matches do we expect to see, okay? So why would E decrease? So put another way, why, given the same A and Q, the same number of searching workers and firms, would we expect to see more or less matches? Well, one way could be, or sorry, one reason could be structural unemployment, okay? So put another way, we could expect to see fewer matches for the same A and Q in a case where skills were very mismatched, okay? So there might be a lot of searching workers and a lot of searching firms, but if the skills that those firms need are different than the skills that the workers have, then we would expect to see fewer matches, right? If I'm searching and the only jobs that are available are carpentry jobs, and I personally have no skills in carpentry, well, then I'm very unlikely to match, right? So a decrease in E could be because of this increase in a skills mismatch. So I write this here, a decrease in E means fewer matches or a lower matching percentage for any J. And so if skills are more mismatched, there will just be fewer job matches, okay? So this makes sense. So I skip right to the graph here. I'm not gonna go through it step by step, but let's look at it piece by piece. Notice that in this case, we have both curves moving. So why? Let's start first with the free entry condition. Why does the curve move in this case? It's because E is present in this function, which represents the curve. And put another way, a decrease in E will shift down this curve. Why? Well, so remember that, well, the result, I should say, is that J will go down, okay? And this makes sense, and here's why. When E goes down, there are now going to be fewer matches. If I'm a firm considering entering the labor force, I say, oh, okay, E has gone down, so I'm just less likely to match, and so therefore my expected profits are lower. Okay, it's more likely that I'm gonna enter and not find anyone. And again, going back to our skills mismatch story, this could be the firm saying, yeah, there's a lot of people searching, but I mean, they don't really have the skills I need, so I'm not even gonna bother looking. So this now says for any values of K, A, Z, and B, J will be lower. And so as a result, none of these variables are changing, and so we just have J moving like so. What about the labor force participation curve? Well, it again rotates and for very similar reasons, right? If I'm a worker thinking about entering the labor force, I say, well, what's my probability of matching? And if it's now lower, again, maybe because of the skills mismatch, maybe the skills I have, I know that firms don't want, well, then I'm less likely to want to join the labor force and search. And so that's why we have this shift down in the VQ curve. And so what is the result? It's an unambiguous decrease in labor force participation. Okay, and again, that's because, you know, there are two reasons for that. One is that J has now gone down, meaning I'm less likely to match, all else equal. And the other is that for any given J, I'm less likely to match because of this decrease in the matching efficiency E. So what about our variables of interest? Well, okay, the unemployment rate increases, again, because the unemployment rate is wholly determined by J, and J has gone down, which means that there will now be fewer matches per searching worker, and therefore more people will remain unemployed, more people will remain searching. Participation rate, well, okay, J goes down, E goes down, and so therefore, lower probability of matching, 
lower payoff to searching and Q goes down. This is what I mentioned already. I'm now more, or sorry, less likely to want to search because I'm just less likely to get a job if I do. And what about output? Well, Q goes down, we saw it right here. J goes down and therefore there are fewer matches and so Y also goes down. Now, why is this interesting? Or put another way, can we see something like this in the data? Okay. And to do this, I'm just going to do a quick aside here and talk about the job vacancy rate. So really the job vacancy rate is meant to measure the tightness of the labor market. Okay, if there are a lot of vacancies, the labor market is tighter. Okay. And so I previously defined the job vacancy rate as the following, which is just J, right? The number of available vacancies per searching worker. That's one definition. An alternative definition that you also see is the following. It's the number of vacancies that fill, so that find a match, or sorry, the opposite. The number of vacancies who don't find a match divided by the number of vacancies. Okay, so the numerator here is the number of vacancies which remain unfilled at the end of the period divided by the total number of vacancies. And notice that this is just one minus the matching function evaluated like this. Now in the end, it doesn't totally matter which one you use. Notice that these move in the exact same direction. Okay, so when J goes up, I claim this one also goes up. Okay, so why? When J goes up, this term goes down, and so therefore one minus that term goes up. So in fact, the two move in the same direction, certainly in this model. And again, both are really just a measure of market tightness, okay? If a lot of vacancies go unfilled, it means the labor market is more tight. There's more people searching than there are, sorry, more available positions than there are available workers. Okay, both capture that same idea. So in this sense, they're not equivalent, but certainly they give the same impression. And I just bring this up because for what comes next, we're gonna use this second definition because it's often used, um, although the first would work equally well, okay? So what's next? Is this idea of the beverage curve, okay? This is kind of an old idea. It goes back to at least the 50s, although beverage, I believe, was maybe around in the 30s. But it shows the following. It says there's a negative relationship between these things. And again, this is kind of intuitive, right? If we think of the vacancy rate as being a measure of labor market tightness, when labor market tightness is high, we expect the unemployment rate to be low, okay? When there are a lot of vacancies available per worker, we expect that the unemployment rate will be low, okay? Because the labor market is tight. And vice versa, if there are very few vacancies, well, then we expect the unemployment rate to be high. So it's this negative relationship between the two. Now, what's interesting is to see what's happened to this relationship, which we do see in the data over time. And that's what we see here. So this is kind of a, I wouldn't want to say a time series, but you can think about it as going this way. The line is following points over time. Okay. So what's interesting is you can think about this early period and then this later period. And so what it looks like has happened is that the beverage curve has shifted to the right, shifted up. So put another way, now for any amount of labor market tightness, unemployment is higher. For any amount of vacancies, unemployment is higher. And so why might this be? Well, one explanation is what we just saw. It could be that matching efficiency has decreased. And one reason for that might be that there's this greater skills mismatch. Okay. Perhaps because of this decline in manufacturing I talked about, perhaps because of some other reason, but certainly this could be an explanation. Because of this skills mismatch, now for any amount of vacancies, any kind of level of vacancies, or any measure of labor market tightness, we now have a higher unemployment rate people are less likely to find a firm or find a job 
for some given number of vacancies. 